Hello runners, welcome to week two of the Six Week Strength and Conditioning Program. Uh, I want to start out by thanking all of you who have uh, reached out and showed appreciation for us going through this process and putting out this free content. Um, I also appreciate everybody who is doing this. And at this point, from what we can tell, uh, there's over 2,000 people that have been accessing the week one video. Uh, and hopefully that means that there's over 2,000 people all over the world that are actually doing the exercise, uh, which gives me a sense of like solidarity that we're all in this together. And when I say all over the world, uh, our media guy actually gave me a list of countries um, where our content is being accessed for the week one strength and conditioning program. I thought I'll read this out because I think it's pretty cool. Uh, how broad of a coalition we have doing this program together. Uh, so the countries are United States, United Kingdom, Canada, Spain, Australia, Germany, Puerto Rico, New Zealand, Austria, the Netherlands, Japan, Hong Kong, Italy, Poland, Norway, South Africa, Argentina, Switzerland, Denmark, Finland, Ireland, Malaysia, Estonia, Greece, Israel, Mexico, Panama, Singapore, Belgium, Cook Islands, Chile, Cyprus, France, Indonesia, India, Iceland, uh, Lithuania, Latvia, Philippines, Pakistan, Portugal, Russia, Sweden, and Thailand. So that's awesome. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we will continue to update that week to week, and we'll see if we can pull more people from more countries into this group effort. Um, so week two, what are we going to be working on? Week one was foundational work. Uh, week two, we continue to work on foundational work. I know it's not the sexiest, it's not the most exciting, but it's imperative that we build from the bottom of the pyramid up. Starting week three, we'll start to get into some more um, kind of specific strength work. Uh, not to say that we're not working on strength in the foundational phase. Um, so from week one to week two, there's going to be some similarity because we're still working on foundational strength, foundational flexibility, and foundational balance, but we do want to progress things. We do want to increase the challenge. And how do we increase the challenge of an exercise? There are multiple ways that we can do it. We can add load to the exercise, or we can increase the load. So the only load that we used last week were bands, and that's going to continue to be kind of the only thing that we use for a while. Um, we do add a little bit of hand weight at the very end. You don't need to have hand weights. Uh, you can use a can of soup. You can use anything that has any weight to it, anywhere between two to three, four, maybe five or six pounds. Uh, so get creative. So today we are going to start to add a little bit of load to the very end of the program. Um, you can increase the speed of exercises. If you only want to increase the speed of an exercise once you have been able to do the exercise with appropriate technique. And you don't want to increase the speed of every exercise. It's just certain exercises that you can increase the speed of. So today we're going to go through the dynamic warm-up, which is going to be the same warm-up that we did last time, because I like that continuity and consistency. Uh, we're going to increase the speed of how we go through it, and we're not going to have any breaks in between. So we're going to start to increase the challenge by increasing the speed, not only of the dynamic flexibility, but also through the core work and even the hip work. We're going to have less break and more work uh, in, in proportion. We can increase the complexity of an exercise. So when we won a lot of the foundational hip strength, a lot of the isolation hip strength work that we did, we did from a sideline position. Um, this week, we're going to start to challenge you by putting you in a side plank position. So we integrate more uh, need for core strength, core control, pelvic stability, and just general coordination and even balance. So we're going to increase complexity in week two that we didn't do in week one. Again, just to kind of progress things and evolve the challenge. Uh, we can increase the volume. So last week, when we were doing the core work and when we were doing the hip work, we gave you kind of a range. Uh, that you could work with him. So if you feel like you're getting stronger, then increase the volume, which means increase the amount of repetitions that you're doing. Now, when we get to the hip strength and the core strength today, we're actually increasing the exercises that we're doing. We're building from last time. We're making some of the exercises from last time a little bit more complex, but then we're adding more exercises as well. So we're already increasing the volume of what, of what we're doing in week two, simply because we're increasing the amount of exercises that we're doing. But if you still feel compelled, you can increase the amount of reps or increase the amount of time that you're doing the core strengthening exercises with in this week compared to last week, just to continue to meet yourself, meet your body where it is. Uh, the last thing that we can do, uh, or the last thing that we'll talk about in regards to this home-based program is we can decrease rest time. Um, so if we do an exercise for 30 seconds, and then we take 30, 40, 50, 60 seconds of rest time, then we let our heart rate come back down and we kind of rejuvenate. 
So another way that you can increase the challenge of an exercise is to de decrease the rest time. So if you were doing 20 seconds break in between the core exercises last week, then maybe try to decrease that rest time to 10 seconds this week. And that'll increase the challenge because you won't give yourself as much recovery time. Um, so that's going to be week two. It's going to have a similar uh, kind of a structure as week one. We're going to do the dynamic flexibility routine that we did in, in week one. Uh, the reason is that I like to use the same dynamic flexibility routine with most of my Nike runners most of the time because with there being consistency and continuity, it gives me a chance to watch them move and I can pick up on whether or not they look particularly tight, they're moving particularly slow, their balance is off, and it allows me to figure out how I adjust their strength and conditioning program based on how they're moving as soon as they come into the gym. It also gives you a chance to check in with your body and see if one hamstring is particularly tight, if the hip flexors are tight, if something is sore, if you feel lethargic, and then you can use that to then figure out how you're going to challenge yourself over the course of the workout. Um, in week three, we're going to do a very different style of dynamic warm-up, and I talk about that when we go through the week two dynamic warm-up. You're going to need one more implement, basically a rope or a stretching strap, so we're going to give you a week to prepare for that. Um, so after the dynamic warm-up, we're going to go into the hip strength, uh, like we did in week one. We're going to go into core strength, like we did in week one. And then we're going to go into the uh, kind of the balance, proprioception, coordination, single leg runner work, uh, which is going to be a little bit more complicated, a little bit more challenging today. Uh, it'll probably be another 40-minute workout. Um, and have fun. Smile. All right, here we are, week two, strength and conditioning, six-week program. Uh, so as I said in the introduction, we're going to use the exact same dynamic warm-up for week two that we did for week one. Um, preparation for week three, try to procure some sort of a rope. Uh, could be a belt, anything that's almost maybe a little bit taller than yourself. Uh, we're going to use this and do a very different kind of dynamic warm-up uh, next week. So grab one of these. All right, so we're going to go through the dynamic warm-up. We're going to spend 30 seconds for each exercise. We're going to go through the same exercises as last time for the dynamic warm-up. Um, and there'll probably be a little bit less talking, and we'll just be a little bit more fluid this time because everybody has a couple of rounds of these under their belt. First, knee to chest. And we have Lindsay Provencio, our wonderful physical therapist, helping us out again today. She is going to be keeping time on her watch. So a couple of the cues we talked about last time, make sure that you keep your body up nice and tall, bring, the chest, bring your knee to your chest, not your chest down to your knee. Start facing this way. And let's make sure that we're not pulling so hard that we're coming backwards. You can actually increase the speed a little bit today. Um, just be a little bit quicker with the repetitions, more so than last time. This will help us get our heart rate up a little bit higher. We're gonna be a little bit smoother in transitions. So now we're going heel to butt. 30 seconds. As I said, you can increase the kind of the speed of your repetitions a little bit, but make sure you're still getting a good stretch and just a brief hold before you come back out of it. Make sure you're keeping your spine nice and tall. Don't pull so hard that you're pulling your pelvis forward or pulling yourself back. You should be getting a nice stretch through the front of the quads. And going into crossover stretch, working on the hamstrings. So crossover, reach down. Switch, crossover, reach down. Try to keep your back nice and flat. You're going to be getting a nice stretch through the back leg. And just like last time, if you want to add a little bit of complexity, you're going to roll off to the side. So face the camera. So if the right leg is behind you, you're going to roll off to the left. That'll increase the stretch and change the location of the stretch just a little bit. Make sure you're breathing through the entire thing. It becomes a pretty easy habit for people to hold their breath when they're doing certain things. Make sure you're always breathing. And we're going into lunge and reach. Take a nice big lunge. Reach up, and as we talked about last time. You want to get length in the hip extension, so look at this next one. So make sure we get this leg nice and far behind us. Make sure that we're reaching up nice and tall. Make sure we're not leaning back. We're coming straight up. And face the camera again. And as we talked about last time, we're trying to create length on this side. We're not trying to create a side bend. So create length on that side. If the left leg is back, left arm comes up, lengthening through the left side of the rib cage. Make sure that you're breathing. 30 seconds of ease. And toe pulls. So we can unlock the knee a little bit, reaching down, grabbing the toes, pulling the toes back up to us. 
And then when you return to the standing position, reach the arms up nice and tall. Control your breathing, control your speed, make it nice and rhythmic. This should give you a stretch through the hamstring, potentially the calf as well. Same idea, try to keep your back nice and flat so you're not arching your back. So we're hinging through the hips, trying to keep the spine in a neutral position. And side to side. So getting the feet nice and wide, lunging off to the left, lunging off to the right. You should feel a stretch through your inner thighs, through your adductors. And again, all of these stretches should just be moderate, nothing too intense. And wall stretch, working on the calves. Jam the front of the foot up into the wall, keep the heel down. Keep your knees straight, bring your pelvis into the wall. Looks like Lindsay's calves have gotten tighter since last time. She's not been doing, doing my, I've been doing my heel raises. She's been doing her heel raises, so her calves are tighter. She's guilty. So we're gonna hold for about five seconds on each side. Going back and forth again, just a moderate stretch, nothing too intense. Make sure you keep the knees straight. 30 seconds. Yeah. Side roll. Side roll back. So now we're going to lay on our side. <laughs> Keeping our knees stacked. Keeping our pelvis straight up and down. Your hips should be at 90 degrees. Your knees are at 90 degrees. Rolling back. You're going to feel a stretch potentially through your back. You might feel a stretch through your pec. Make sure that you're breathing. Make sure that you don't let the pelvis roll back as you roll back. We're trying to isolate this to the spine and to the pec. So we're gonna do 30 seconds on each side. Don't force it. Come back to the end range of motion. Pause for a second or two. Relax into it. And then we'll switch and do the other side. And as we said last time, if you feel like you have stiffness in one direction more so than the other, then it might mean that you want to focus on that a little bit later tonight. It might mean that you might want to spend a little bit more time doing it right now, just to try to loosen up the stiff side. Then we're going into quadruped thoracic spine rotations on your hands and knees. One hand behind your head, rotating the elbow up toward the ceiling, elbow comes back down towards the ground. You know, just as with all the other exercises, we can increase our speed this week a little bit more so than we did last week. Last week, we were working on control and technique. If we worked on it several times last week and our control and our technique is improved, then we can start to increase the speed, which is gonna increase our heart rate a little bit, increase our core temperature a little bit. We're still gonna get into flexibility work. We're gonna be nice and ready once we get into our hip strength and our core strength, and then our balance and functional exercise cluster today. Couple more seconds. And then we're going into quad pull. So we're gonna lay on our side. The bottom leg is flexed up. So the hips at about 90 degrees and knees at about 90 degrees. I'm gonna anchor her foot because I'm a nice guy. And she's gonna keep the heel back to her butt. She's gonna, so her knee is kind of flying away from midline right now. She put, she's probably doing that so I can create a correction for you out in the audience. Yeah. She would never do that on her own. No. So try to keep your leg parallel to the ground as you pull back. And looks like her quads are tighter as well. She might be doing strengthening work this last week, but she didn't do any of the flexibility work. Yeah. I'm gonna do this for about 30 seconds. You should feel this all through the front of your quad and hip flexor. If you're feeling this in your low back, it could mean that you're pulling so hard that you're kind of cranking your pelvis. Keep your core strong so your pelvis stays neutral. If you don't have somebody to anchor your foot, or if you don't have your foot nudged up against the door frame, you can take your bottom hand and grab onto the leg, and that'll help keep it up. So she's doing a little bit better job on this side. And I think it was last week that we saw that her right leg had a little bit of weakness and tightness issues. So those are continuing to manifest. But she's not doing her work. <laughs> Okay. And, and uh, the last one is sliders. 
So we are going to use a slide board today. So this is going to replicate what you probably have in your house, either a linoleum floor or a wooden floor, uh, something that's just slippery. And then we're going to use a towel. And we're going to put the towel down on the floor. So she's going to stand here, put on the, on the towel, and she's going to use that to slide. So this we're just going to do a set of five of each. We're going to do five slide and reach, and then five slide and rotate. Slide and reach. Make sure you spend a couple seconds back there in that lunge position. Make sure you're getting a good stretch in the front of that back leg. So if the right leg is coming back, you should be getting a nice stretch through the quad and through the hip flexor. As you reach the arms up, think about lengthening the front of your abdominal cavity, not extending into your lumbar spine. So we're trying to get length. We're trying to take up space. Take up a lot of space this way. Take up a lot of space this way. Now we're rotating. We're going to do five of these. And compartmentalize this so that you do the sliding lunge, then you do the rotation. Don't do them at the same time. You want to be a little bit more formulaic about it. Lunge, rotate, hold, come back up. And then we'll do the other side. Again, make sure that we're trying to get the extension through the hip and not through the back. So extend through your back, show them how you would cheat. So that would be extension through the back. And then if she tilts her pelvis, contracts her core, she'll stabilize her spine, and then she'll isolate the stretch through the front of the hip. So after she does five lunge and reach, she's gonna go straight into five lunge and rotate. work. That oh. stretching is over. All right, we're going to move into our foundational hip strength, but we're going to add a little bit of complexity into the exercises today. These are going to look very similar to what we did last time, but we've evolved them a little bit to make them a little bit more challenging. So make sure that we have our bands, which I think that everybody probably has in front of them, knowing that we're going to be using them. Uh, so we're going to have one band around the knees. We're going to start with clamshells, but now we're going to do it from a side plank position. So let's get into position. So Lindsay's nice and flat, knees are bent to 90 degrees. She's in a nice side plank position and she's gonna start doing the clamshells. We're gonna do a set of 15 to 20. Um, we'll do a set of 15 and if you wanna do a set of 20, then you can do the additional five. Lindsay told me that she's not been doing her clamshells, so we're not gonna make her do all 20 and embarrass her in front of the audience. We'll suffer. So a lot of the same rules as last time, make sure that the pelvis stays straight up and down. Don't let the pelvis rock back as the knee comes up. We really wanna isolate this to the glutes. And now that we're in a plank position, not only are we gonna get work from the leg that's moving, from the glutes on the left side in this case, but now the glutes on the right side are having to maintain an isometric contraction to maintain her stability. So the core is active, the bottom leg is active, the top leg is moving a little bit slower. Good. Let's just start to use momentum, kicking her leg up. So we want to come up with a little bit of control. We want to pause for a second and then come down. Set a 15 to 20 on each side. We're going to transition into reverse clamshell. So get a band that's a little bit lighter. We're going to put it around our feet. We're going to be in the exact same side plank position. Now our knees are hovering apart just a little bit. Top foot is moving away from the bottom foot a little bit slower. This is what happens when when you're not as in shape as maybe you should be during the quarantine, you start to move a little bit faster so you don't have to spend so much time in the side plank position. Put on the COVID-19. The COVID-19? COVID-19. It's like the freshman 15, but... Oh, she says the COVID-19 is like the freshman 15. A little bit different. A little bit different. So let's make sure that we're maintaining a good pace. So not, let's not try to speed up. Let's not use momentum to kick the leg up. So this right leg that we know is, has a little bit of weakness, she has a little bit more space here, which is making it easier for her. So check with yourself, make sure that you're doing things correctly. The second or the third time you do this, this week, week two, maybe do it in front of a mirror so you can kind of watch your body and see if you can visually see any cheats that you're using that you're not conscientious of. So we did 15 to 20 reverse clamshells on each side. Uh, we don't need a, a band for this. So now we're gonna do lateral leg lifts from a similar plank position. So the bottom leg is in the same position that we've been in for the clamshell and reverse clamshell. Top leg is straight. 
Pelvis is straight up and down. And now we're gonna lift the top leg up and back. Make sure that that leg stays straight. And the idea is you want the leg to come behind the plane of your body as you're coming up. That's gonna help isolate the muscles in the back of the hip. If you bring the leg up and forward, so bring it up and forward, you'll start to feel that effort in the front of the leg in a muscle called the tensor fascia lata, which we don't wanna target here. So the leg has to come into an extension as it comes up if we're really gonna isolate the muscles deep in the back of the hip. We're working on a set of 15 to 20, controlling our speed, doing a fancy spin just like Lindsay did, up into the other plank position, and get rolling. If you feel like you need a little bit more break in between these exercises and you don't want to go from one to the other, then just hit pause, take a breath, and then catch up with us. If you feel like you have pretty good fitness and pretty good strength, then you can roll through these. Make sure that you're working consistently, taking very short breaks, because that'll get your heart rate up, it'll keep your core temperature up, and you'll get a little bit more bang out of, out of the exercises and out of the, out of the entire routine. So that was our sideline clamshell, or our side uh, plank Jane Fonda's or lateral leg lifts. And now we are standing clams. standing clams. So whatever band you use for the clamshells, we're gonna put back around our knees. We're gonna add a little bit more complexity into the exercise. This is similar to the clamshell, but now we're gonna be standing and balancing on one leg. So Lindsay's gonna balance on one leg, but I, I bend a little bit deeper. So we wanna have a little bit of a bend in that leg that's the anchor leg. And the top leg is kicking out and back. So Lindsay has her hands on her pelvis to make sure that her pelvis stays stable. We don't want the pelvis to rotate and open up. We want everything from the pelvis up to stay nice and silent, nice and still. We're only trying to get the work from the leg kicking out and rotating back. And you should feel this in the back of the right hip. You could feel it in the back of the left hip. The back of the left hip is having to stabilize the anchor leg while the moving leg has muscles that are actually going through a range of motion. You should be getting equal challenge on both glutes. You might feel it more on one than the other, that's okay. Another thing to really pay attention to, as the moving leg kicks back, don't let the anchor leg dive in towards midline. So as this leg moves, it's gonna create tension in the band. If you let the knee dive in because of that tension, then you're training really bad habits. We call that a valgus collapse of the knee. So same thing, we're working on a set of about 15 to 20 on each side. Um, then we are going to take the band, drop it down around our ankles, and we're going to do a set of standing chain fondas, or standing kickbacks, where, so don't let the right foot touch the ground, so we're going to stay balancing the entire time, keep your chest up a little bit higher, so Lindsay was bending forward, we want you to be straight up and down, you can have a little bit of bend in the anchor leg, kicking the moving leg out and back at an angle, at about a 45 degree angle, making sure that you're getting extension and a little bit of abduction. So she's kind of targeting my hand right now. She's gonna do a set of about 15 or 20. This is gonna challenge balance, it's gonna challenge her core strength, it's gonna challenge her pelvic stability, it's gonna challenge glute strength. We're gonna work on a set of 15 to 20. Make sure you don't hold your breath. Make sure you have a very Focus, concentrated face like Lindsay. That'll help you do the exercises. Be very serious. You can't have fun when we're exercising. That'd be horrible. Um, and now we are going into some sliders. Side steps. Oh, side steps. So let's put the band up a little bit higher, just below the knees. We are gonna be in a squat position. And because we don't have a long length, what we would normally do is we would take repetitive steps in one direction and then back the other direction. For us, we're just going to stay in a squat position. We're gonna to step to the left, pause, right, pause. We're gonna go back and forth 20 times. Make sure that you stay nice and low. Keep your knees bent. So each step is one. We're gonna do 20 total, which will be 10 each side. You should feel this in the back of the hips as well. Make sure you're taking wide steps, not so wide that you're feeling stretches in your adductors, but don't take tiny little steps. We want to try to take up some space. 20? Yeah. All right. Two more exercises. And we need our slippery floor again. And now we need two towels. So we'll give you just a little bit of time to prepare. If you need two towels, get two towels. If you need to hit pause, hit pause. Lindsay, do you have a joke? Do you have a 10-second joke to give people time to prepare? No one wants to hear my dad jokes. 
<laughs> Give us your best dad joke. No. <laughs> All right, no dad jokes. It's longer than 10 seconds. Maybe week three you'll get a dad joke. Maybe week three. So now we have two towels. Let me pull this back a little bit to center you. And Liz is going to be on her back. She's going to have a towel under each heel. Her knees are going to be at 90 degrees. She's going to come up into a bridge. And then from there, she's going to keep her pelvis totally level. So last time we talked about that hot cup of coffee that I like to balance on various body parts. So now we have the hot cup of coffee right on her stomach, like right on her belly button. That needs to stay nice and stable. She's going to extend one leg out. We'll do alternating left and right. So we'll do alternating left and right. So you're going to kick out. Try to keep everything nice and stable. Try to keep equal pressure on both feet. The tendency is going to be that you want to keep most of the pressure on the leg that's stationary. You want to keep 50% of your pressure on the leg that's extending. This is going to work into your hamstrings. This is going to work into your glutes. We're going to do a set of 20 total. 10 each side. Are you counting? Yeah. 13. 13. If you need to do 13. less, do less. That's totally fine. So just like we talked about last time, we want you to challenge yourself, but we don't want you to strain. So Liz is going to try to do a set of 20 total, 10 on each side. She's starting to speed up a little bit. She's starting to shake. She's getting fatigued. She's hitting a point that she's probably ready to quit. Was that 20? That was 20. Okay. I promise. So there are a couple of different variations that we can do there. So one is just alternating left, right, left, right, left, right. Another variation is we can come up into that position and we can just do one leg at a time. So we can stretch one leg out, bring it back, same thing. We can do a set of 10, set of 8, set of 12 if you want to. Then you can take a break and then you can come back and do the other side for the same amount of repetitions. Two different variations. Play with both, maybe do both if you feel like you have pretty good strength and endurance. There's a good chance that as you do this, you'll feel your hamstrings starting to cramp up a little bit. Um, if you feel them cramping, then take a break, stretch out, come back to it. If you can't yet do it without a lot of cramping, then um, just build up to it slowly. Just do a couple of repetitions, take a break, do a couple of repetitions, take a break. It's not uncommon that this causes a little bit of hamstring cramping the first few times that you do it. So be careful, but kind of scale it appropriately. Next, we are going to come into a front plank position. And Lindsay's going to have her toes on each one of the towels. And then from here, we're going to do mountain climbers. So she's going to bring one leg up and the other leg down, other leg up, alternating back and forth, Try to keep equal pressure on each toe. This is going to really challenge core strength. It's going to challenge some shoulder strength. It's going to challenge your hip flexors. And let's try to do at least 20, if not 30, you can even go up to 40. I think you'll be stronger in this position than you will in that other position that we were doing hamstrings. So if you can get to 40, 20 on each side, then let's go for it. Uh, make sure that you're breathing, don't hold your breath. Make sure that you're keeping that hot cup of coffee right here, nice and stable, so your butt's not too high up in the air, it's not sagging down. 40. And 40, and then take a break. Um, and if you like it, then do a second set of those. Those are really good. Those are starting to hit a lot of things that we need as runners. We won't make Lindsay do it, but you can always pause, do your other set, and then continue on. Good job. All right, we're going into our core strength series. So just like the hip strength series, we're going to build on what we did last time. This is how we progress things week to week and how we would normally progress things month to month. And again, this is all condensed. So we want there to be familiarity and some similarity, but we need to actually continue to challenge you. So we're going to do some of the same exercises as last time, uh, but we're going to add some new stuff into it as well. So the program is just getting longer. And then week three is going to get even longer until we have a really large, comprehensive, robust, high-density core strength uh, program. So we're going to do 30 seconds again, 10 seconds, 20 seconds off. Um, and we're going to start with the flutter kicks. So let's go. I'm going to keep time here so Lindsay can't cheat. So her core is nice and strong. Her shoulders are up off the ground. She's breathing. She's flutter kicking. So we're doing this for time. You don't need to count repetitions. You can do it for 20 seconds. You can try to do it for 30 seconds. Um, and you can just kind of switch back and forth in between. If you feel like there's one that's particularly hard, then only do it for 20 seconds. Just like with everything else, we want you to challenge yourself but not strain anything. So Liz is going to go for 30 seconds. That's been 25 seconds. 28, 29, and 30. If you're going to take a break for a little bit. You can take a break as long as you need. If you need a 30-second break, take a 30-second break. If you want to condense the rest time down to something less, like 10 seconds, then go for that. Kind of meet yourself where you are. Next exercise is going to be the crisscross. So we're in the same position. 
And now we're showing crisscross, so the feet are coming across midline, back and forth, very similar exercise. Make sure you keep your core nice and strong, keep your shoulders up off the ground, make sure that you're breathing. If you need to take a break in between, take a break, then you can finish off for 30 seconds. Do what feels right for you. That's been 20 seconds. So if you want to stop at 20, I'll start telling you when 20 seconds hit. We'll try to get Lindsay to go for 30. Yeah. Until she revolts, that's 30 seconds. Let's take a break, take a little bit of a rest. And the next one is going to be split crunch, which I believe we did last time as well. And then after that, we're going to get into some new stuff. And let's go. I'll tell you when we hit 20 seconds. Lindsay's going to go for 30 seconds unless she peters out early. So make sure that the leg gets down, the heel still hovers off the ground. So don't let the foot touch the ground. You're going to feel this in the hip flexor on the leg that's down, and you're going to feel it in the core, obviously, as you come up. Make sure that you're breathing the entire time. Don't hold your breath as you come up for any of these exercises. We need to really train our breathing with motion. That's been 25 seconds, sorry. <laughs> 29 and 30, and we'll take a break. Um, it's really important that we breathe through core strength exercises because the diaphragm is actually the top of the core. We think of the core being the rectus abdominis, the obliques, the transverse abdominis, all these muscles around our midsection. But the top of the core is, is actually the diaphragm and the bottom of the core is our pelvic floor. Um, and we have some information on pelvic floor strengthening that we might link to in one of these, extra, or one of these videos that Lindsay is a specialist in. Um, so make sure that you're breathing. Having good diaphragmatic breathing is imperative in order to do core strength appropriately. Next exercise, we're gonna be in a side plank position and we're gonna do kickbacks. So the top leg is gonna kick up and back. We're gonna do this for 30 seconds. Lindsay's probably only gonna be able to do this for about five seconds. And then she's just gonna hold the plank position. This is a very challenging exercise. This is challenging both the strength of the leg that's down, the core, the leg that's kicking up and back. Make sure you're breathing. So that's been 18 seconds. She got further than I thought she would. That's 20 seconds. She's gonna hold the plank for the remainder of the 30 seconds. That's been 25 seconds. Make sure that you're nice and flat. Don't fold up like a taco. 29 and 30. And we'll take a little bit of a break as we do our fancy spin to get to the other side. Then we'll give you a little bit more of a break. Next week, Lindsay will be ready for dad jokes. Keep so if you have breaks, she can give us 10 second dad jokes. That'll yep. be her homework between now and next Monday. It's a lot of work. I'll ask Chris. And let's go for it. Side plank, kick up and back. Make sure that this top leg is kicking up and back, just like we did with the, uh, the hip cluster, the sideline uh, plank, Jane Fondas. Yes, That's been 12 it. seconds. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Another ten seconds will get us to thirty. So Lindsay hit about sixteen seconds on both sides with that one. She wasn't even looking at the clock. Twenty-eight, twenty-nine, and thirty seconds. Let's take a break. We're going to stay in this lateral plank position um, to continue to work on coronal plane core strength. This time we're gonna do hip dips. So we're gonna get up into that side plank position. We're gonna stay nice and flat, make sure that we're not folded forward, so fold up and show them. So that's what we don't want. So we need to be nice and flat, almost like you're, you're up against the wall. And then we're gonna do hip dips in elevation. So we wanna dip down, just barely touching the ground, but not putting a lot of weight on the ground. And then we wanna bring the hips up just above midline a little bit. We're working through that full range of motion. We're breathing. We're making sure that we're not folding up like a taco. We're keeping a smile on our face. <laughs> That's 20 seconds. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And fancy spin. We'll take a little bit of a break before we go into the next one. And we'll say that's about 10 seconds. So let's get up and get after it. Make sure that we're breathing, make sure that we're nice and flat. We're probably gonna feel this, we're definitely gonna feel this through the lateral side of our core. Uh, you'll probably feel it quite a bit in the bottom glute. So in this case, the left glute will probably be getting quite a bit of work in her. She'll probably feel that, that's 20 seconds. 25 seconds, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Take a break. 
I'm going to come back onto our back. We're going to do another new exercise. This is called a fetal crunch. And you'll see Lindsay do it here in a second. We'll give her a little bit more of a break. She's breathing hard. <laughs> My arm's up over there. No. Just here. Yeah. yeah. So this is a fetal crunch. So go ahead and go into it and we'll explain it. So we're coming up. We're bringing our knees to our chest. And then we're coming down flat. When you come flat, try not to let the heels touch the ground and try not to let the shoulder blades touch the ground. So we're going from kind of that like hollowed out boat pose up into kind of a folded up position. Bringing the knees to our chest. That's 15 seconds. We're going to try to go for 30 seconds. Make sure that you're not holding your breath. That's 20 seconds. Coordinate your breathing. That's 25 seconds. And that's 30 seconds. Good work, guys. We're getting close to the end, but we're not quite there. We're going to change positions. This is a new position for us. We're going to be in a front plank position. Lindsay wants to go straight into it. I think she just wants to be done with this. So we're going to be in a front plank position. We're going to bring knees to elbows. So the knees come out to the side. So they're not coming straight to the elbow. We're going to bring them out to the side a little bit, around to the elbow, alternating back and forth. We're going to get to 30 seconds. I'll tell you when we hit 20 seconds, take that hot cup of coffee, put it right on your sacrum so your butt's not too high, it's not too low. As you bring the leg out to the side, that's 20 seconds. As you bring the leg out to the side, don't twist your pelvis back and forth like that. You want to keep this nice and stable. That's 27 seconds. We're almost there. Make sure you're breathing. That's 30 seconds. Take a little bit of a break. Come down. So come down all the way. Let's do a little bit of a stretch. Let's just do a, yeah. So if you're starting to get kind of tight and you want to do a little bit of a stretch at this point because we have two more exercises, um, you can keep the pelvis down, press up. This should stretch out the front of your core, front of the hip flexors. Take a couple of deep breaths. Expand your rib cage. And when you're ready, we're gonna get right back into a high plank position and do shoulder taps. So we're gonna be in a high plank position and we're gonna tap the shoulder, tap the shoulder, tap the shoulder. So previously we were, we were going from four points of support to three points, lifting up one leg. Now we're going from four points to three points, lifting up one arm. So it's just a slightly different variation of a challenge where we're having to create a lot of rotational stability. That is 20 seconds. So keep that hot cup of coffee. She's starting to wiggle back and forth. Yeah, there you go. So you gotta police yourself unless you have somebody mean like me watching you and criticizing you. Won't be even nicer than I am. That's 30 seconds. Good work. And roll onto your back. We have one more exercise. You guys are probably feeling it at this point. We've gotten a lot of feedback from a lot of people that are watching this that the core is particularly challenging, which means it's probably particularly useful for you. Last one is gonna be bicycles, 30 seconds. This is a fairly common exercise. Lindsay just took a very deep breath in. She's in the home stretch. But I'm not holding my breath. But she's not holding her breath. No, she's very deep breath in. Deep breaths are okay, holding breaths are not okay. So we're doing opposite elbow to knee, going back and forth, keeping the core nice and strong, keeping the extended leg hovering off the ground, don't let it tap the ground. That is 20 seconds. Lindsay's gonna go for another 10 because she is an animal. She just sped up a little bit. She's feeling good about herself. She sees the finish line. And 30 seconds. Good job. Stop. Awesome. Roll on your stomach. Let's do a little bit more of a stretch. Good work. All right. We're getting into our functional kind of balance. Uh, more complicated exercise cluster. So last time we did the runner touch. This time we're going to do the runner touch. We're going to add an element. We're going to add some weight. So Lindsay has a hand weight. This is about six pounds or so. Eight pounds. Yeah. Eight pounds. Sorry, eight pounds. It's a big deal. Um, if you have hand weights, use hand weights. If you don't have hand weights, you just use a can of soup. Um, use something that has a little bit of weight to it. That's that's easy to grasp. You don't actually need to have a weight to find weight. Uh, so just get creative. So we're going to do another set of runner touches. So we're going to start by good running position, nice and long in the spine. Hot cup of coffee right here. Make sure that we're not leaning back. Up nice and tall, so that's our start and stop position. We're gonna hinge forward, so if she's on the left leg, the weight is in the right hand, and she's gonna come back up, and she's gonna press over her head at this point, nice and tall. And we're gonna do a set of six of these. So as you come up, make sure that you're not leaning back too far. Bringing the weight up higher over your head is gonna create more of a balance challenge because now our center of mass is a little bit higher. So it's going to be harder to maintain that stability. Make sure you're breathing. Make sure you keep that knee high. Make sure you don't lean back. Lindsay's starting to lean back. She's fatigued from the core work. How many is that? Six. 
and that's six. And we're going to switch. And the feet are cramping a little bit. Yeah. So if she's on the right leg, then the weight's going to be in the left hand. Ooh, and then walk down the right side. That's what we've been noticing. This right side is a little bit funky. So I can probably see it shaking more than you. It's kind of like rotating in and out pretty quickly. It's an indication of some weakness and a little bit of a lack of proprioception. This is a really good exercise for her. And she might feel like because she doesn't have as much stability around the hip, she might feel her foot cramping a little bit more with this because the foot's going to try to create stability where the hip isn't. So if you feel like you're really gripping the ground with your feet, then try to relax your toes. It'll, it'll decrease your stability a little bit, but it's probably going to force some of that strength back up to your hip, which is where we really want it to be coming from. So she transitioned right to the other exercise. She's getting tired of yelling at us. She's starting to get done with everything. She's taking more breaks. If you need a break, then hit pause. We're going to another set of six. And if you want to do uh, the second set of six, just bring the weight down to your side like you did for the first week, that's fine. If you feel like you're not ready to press the weight over your head, then just stay with what we did the first week where the weight stays down at your side. That's totally fine. That's still a progression because we're using weight now. The reason that we like using weight on one side of the body is that it just creates more of a balance challenge and more of a core strength and hip uh, challenge. If we have weight on both sides of the body, then we're counterbalanced. We like it being an asymmetry and lower just to increase the balance challenge and increase the coordination challenge and increases the core strategy challenge as well. So this right leg is looking a little bit better on this oak. And as soon as I said that, just knocked her off balance. Six. And six. Good job. So take a little bit of a break. This next exercise is going to be called the hot salsa. So we're going to be in a lunge position. We're going to get down in the lunge position a little bit deeper. We're going to hinge forward at the pelvis, keeping the back flat. We're going to reach the weight out in front of us, down a little bit deeper. So we reach the weight down towards the floor. Then from there, we're going to keep the weight away from us. We're going to hinge up through an overhead running position. This is a similar position that we were just in. And then we're going to switch legs. So the other leg comes down, other leg goes forward, get in the lunge, reach forward, hinging at the hip, back stays flat. Weight stays away from us as we drive ourselves up in a running position. You're going to feel this loading through the back of the hip, on the standing leg, the hamstring, you feel it in the calf. Get nice and tall, make sure you're not leaning back. This is doing a pretty good job. We're going to do a set of eight of these, four on each side. So eight total, four alternating. Right leg is starting to twist and spin and show some stability again. As she gets better at the sideline hip strength, all that foundational hip strength work that we did previously, that will translate into her having a little bit better balance in the single leg standing position. So if you have one leg that's a little bit less balanced than the other, just realize that it will get better as we continue to go through the, the six week period. Nice and tall. And make sure that you're balancing when you get to that running position. I didn't know if Lindsay took much of a break. She really wants to get done with this. And again, if you need more break than Lindsay's taking, then you take that break and pause on your uh, on your screen and catch up with us later. Two sets of eight. She's sweating. She's looking at me. She's not happy. We have what was that? Two sets or one set? Oh, that was one set of eight. Okay, so we'll take a little bit of a break. I'm going into it. And she's one straight into it. Here we go. Left leg's looking good. No pressure for the right leg. And it's getting a little bit wobbly. And I can also tell that on the right leg, she's starting to lean back a little bit more. So as she gets fatigued, she's starting to cheat by arching into her back on the right side. The left side looks pretty good. So as she gets fatigued, her biomechanical flaws start to become more obvious. So there she corrected it a little bit. That's great. Again, you have to be your own police officer, so watch yourself in the mirror the next uh, one or two times you do this over the course of the second week. Make sure you're breathing. Another trick, if you feel like you're really stable, then take your shoes off. Shoes give us a really nice uh, kind of a foundation to our foot bed, so it helps to stabilize. If you feel like you uh, can benefit from a little bit less stability, then take your shoes off and you're there for you. Just start moving back again. Okay. That was it. All right, so that's the second set of eight. 
Uh, we're going to take a little bit of a break. Lindsay is just rolling, so she gets on any break. She's just going to go up right up and impress you with her cardiovascular fitness. That's all I got going for me. And distract you from that after running in this particular week. Yeah. So here we're going to start in that running position. We'll start with the weight of our chest. And we're going to reach out to the side. So if the right leg is up, we're going to reach out to the side, bring the weight down towards the knee, come back up. We're going to try to balance in that running position. If you feel strong, you can bring the weight up over your head. If you don't, then keep the weight down in your chest. Let's do a set of six of these on each side. So she's going to do the press. It's going to be particularly challenging finding that balance point as you're coming in this lateral direction, just because your foot is narrower than it is wide. So you're coming onto a part of the foot that has less base of support. So this is going to be a particular uh, challenge to your balance. So at home, I'm going to want you to do uh, two sets of six. We'll let Lindsay do one set of six. Then we'll relieve her of her duties. And let's watch that right leg. You have the international audience paying attention to your instabilities. No don't embarrass yourself, no pressure. And if, like Lindsay, if you have one leg that seems to be a little bit weaker, a little bit less stable, then just slow down the exercise a little bit. The faster you go, the harder it's going to be to maintain your balance and your stability. Slow down a little bit, and it'll be a little bit easier. You need to decrease the range of motion a little bit as well, so if you don't reach as far off to this left side, that's okay. Meet yourself where you are. This is a particularly challenging exercise. That's why it's a week two, not week one. We build up to this. Week three, we're going to have to do of things. Cool. Done. 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 Done.